Hello, Mary Newlands with your story here in San Francisco with Ben Parr, former editor of Mashable, and now? <laughs> now I'm an investor. I have an early stage fund called Dominate Fund. We actually invest in startups and uh, help accelerate their growth and coach startups on how to capture attention. Um, and part of that's because I'm also just completed a book for HarperCollins called Captivology, the science of capturing people's attention, which dives into the science and psychology of attention, why we pay attention to certain people, products, companies, and ideas, and how to capture, maintain, and grow attention. And that book comes out early next year. So that leads on to my first question very nicely. If you're a startup, how do you get PR and what do you see as a future of PR and conveying your message? So to understand what the future is, we have to understand what the past was first. And so in the far, far past, it was, uh, you know, there was a very small group of PR people and there's a very small group of journalists and a lot of it was the friends and relationships. Right. Uh, it's expanded a whole lot more. The biggest change is that there's more information than ever. Um, in 2011, somewhere around 1.3 three, eight trillion gigabytes of data were created. But next year, it'll be somewhere around 7.5 trillion gigabytes. And that's equivalent to the Library of Congress multiplied by 1.38 million. And so there is just a ton of information and more being created than ever. Uh, there was another study that just found that the amount of information that's been is being thrown at us is more than quadrupled over the last decade. And so when you combine all of that, you have a world where getting attention is harder than ever. And so on the PR side and what the future is, uh, it's shorter, it's to the point, it's uh, doing something that is unique and does truly stand out on its own merits. There is still a place, like there's a couple components. There will always be a place for personal relationships when it comes to press and PR. When I was a journalist, there were a group of people in PR who I trusted because they would give me good stories and they would hold back bad ones. And so I would trust them when they would come to me. Um, others would be smart and they would do something which I like to call uh, the credibility rule, which is, you know, you lead in the title of your email with uh, a credible name that is uh, uh, has bought into your idea, your startup, as an investor and advisor. So it does actually matter whether or not there's an Andreessen Horowitz or a Google involved, because we like the journalist doesn't have as much time to look through every email and every pitch. So you need to get to the key details really early and really fast. And so if I had to say there was one thing, it's just how quickly we have to get to the point in PR. And apart from having that amazing investor that's going to catch everyone's attention. What's a, what would be another way you would recommend for those startups to grab um, media's attention? So, uh, actually, this is a little bit of something that I wrote in my book, and it's, uh, it, it's the theory of violating expectations, and it comes from uh, communications theory. And it goes something like this. If you and I were sitting at a restaurant, you know, we were just chatting and catching up and suddenly just some random person comes and sit down, sit at our sits down at our table and says absolutely nothing. We're going to pay attention to that person, right? But why? And the reason why is because they have violated our expectations in some way, something about our social norms. And we pay attention to that person or that thing until we've resolved it. And the best companies and the ones that really come out find a way to violate expectations. You talk about things like Patagonia, which had the don't buy this jacket campaign. And that's not something a clothing brand's supposed to say, but they did, and it doubled their sales. Or the Old Spies campaign, which is a famous one, talking about like uh, a character that would just completely violate your expectations every couple of seconds in commercials. And so great startups, when they're um, launching, they are either doing something that violates expectations, um, or they are uh, violating expectations in some way of their marketing or their messaging. And so that's one of the key ways to get attention if you don't have that credibility already established. Okay, so that's from the uh, perspective of um, a start trying to get attention. Now, with all of that content being made and more and more companies trying to get your attention, from the media side, um, uh, there are more and more media outlets, uh, and increasingly, people looking for shorter form content. Uh, from the media side, what do you see as a future for media? 
So there's a couple interesting things. The first one is that um, getting to the point is not necessarily the same as shorter content. And so actually people do like reading long content or watching longer videos, but you have to actually get to the point extraordinarily early and then have something compelling, usually some kind of mystery, or some kind of story that keeps them engaged throughout the entire thing. This is why things like The New Yorker can do a whole piece. But without that, you people drop off like off the map every time. Um, there's a couple of things of trends I've seen in media. You've seen more um, in the last couple of months, even more and more superstars, quote unquote, starting their own like media outlets. You know, with uh, Nate Silver and Five Thirty Eight and Ezra Klein over at Vox. And there's more room now for more of these because uh, people want more information from more sources and more voices. It's a way to make sure that you're not uh, getting information from just one place or just one opinion. Um, and it's just kind of the habits that we've had. But at the same time, uh, the other bigger issue is figuring out a way to truly monetize that. You know, the New York Times has had trouble and some of the big ones have had trouble monetizing it. Um, and the honest truth is, I don't know what quite the answer is to the monetization problem. It might be something in with video, which I think is going to be a major component in the future of media. But I'm not 100% certain. It's really, it's really the Wild West right now. Who do you see uh, doing media coverage really well? Who are you really impressed with right now? People covering media? Yeah, pe people in the media. Who do you see as great media creators right now? So... I'll first say uh, there's a couple. Um, I was impressed with Kara Swisher and the launch of Recode. I've always been impressed with Kara Swisher. She is a tough as nails reporter and editor who um, is very protective of her team and can you know take down anybody um, at any time for doing the wrong thing. And but more importantly, has done a great job of rolling out Recode.net and turning that into a media property that lots of people in the technology industry have to read. Um, I liked I like what I've seen so far from Vox.com and Ezra Klein with uh, the annotations to show you what, uh, like explain what's going on in certain like areas, because not everybody knows what's happened in say, um, you know, in Benghazi or other things, and having that explanation can be useful for a lot of people. Um, and then there's lots of other tools that you've seen, like it, it reminded me of like Rap Genius even, and you don't consider that a media company, but They've done a good job of annotating lots of news and lots of information. I think there's this annotation thing that might be a bigger part of news media. And so those are just a few of the names that have impressed me. There's a lot, like, all across. I think this is actually a good time for journalism right now. I think that there's a lot more people doing more entrepreneurial things. You'll see more people leave the big publications to start their own and be successful at it. Very interesting. And you're speaking at PR Summit with me, uh, Sean's great conference coming up. Uh, what will you be talking about there? I'll be giving a little bit of a hint and a little bit of a dive into uh, some of the things that I looked into m the research into my book, more specifically geared towards how do you use uh, science to create compelling content and how do you use science uh, to create you know, compelling press and compelling media. If people want to follow you and connect with you, how do they do that? I am at Ben Parr everywhere, B-E-N-P-A-R-R. -R. You can search that on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, pretty much on everything, and you'll find me. You can also go to Captivology.com if you want to get updates on the book. Ben, thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. I'm Murray Nunes with Your Story. I'll see you next time.